Hello everyone, this video is going to be about embossed fills. Embossed fills are basically embosses you can put in a standard fill to get lines into fills that you can't get otherwise. So the first thing we need to do is when you open up Embroiderware, make sure that your defaults are set properly for the default fills. Um, if you've already changed your defaults file and you don't want to go to set defaults, um, you want to change them uh, manually. But I'm just going to press set defaults here and you can see there's three things under the fill category now they've been added called embossed stitch edges set that to true embossed stitch length set that to five and embossed width set that to one I'll later explain what these are but for now we'll just set these to these defaults so to do an embossed fill I'm going to just draw a circle I'm going to use a different color tan so we can see what we got here on various graphics I'm going to put some curves in. You can put a circle, several circles. Put a line. And that's what I'm going to start with. Um, so basically, we have six objects here. One of them is going to be the base object. Whenever we add something to a fill, like a hole or another area to a fill, we always have a base object. And the base object is the primary object that everything's added to. So in this case, we're going to use object number one. And there's different ways that you can add the embosses to. If you look under the curve modifications menu, we now have a new option called add emboss and also remove emboss and if you're familiar with holes these work the same way where you would choose the parent graphic and then the actual graphic that you want to add the hole want to add as the hole in the case of the add emboss the same thing parent graphic and then the add emboss graphic you can do them you can set it up in this menu and if everything's selected you can start selecting things like this is a parent graphic and that's the emboss parent graphic Emboss. And so in this selection method, you have to select um, one of the points on each of the graphics. Or if you want, you can just do it in the graphic object browser by just choosing parent graphic item, current graphic, next item, parent graphic, next item. So there's two ways to actually add the embosses to the object. So now the object is only one object big. I actually made it a fill yet. Uh, we could have made it a fill initially and just added the graphics or we could have just done the graphics like we just did here. I did it this way just so you could see clearly which graphics were being added and such. So we're going to go ahead to the quick menu and make uh, this fill of top stitches. And it doesn't really look like much but when you go into 3D mode you'll see that now you have embosses in the graphic. We have a line and we have the circles and we have sort of the curve here. Um, now, you're wondering, well, this probably isn't really what you wanted. It maybe isn't defined well enough. Um, so what we can do is we can adjust the emboss parameters. So to do that, we go ahead and make sure that we have the object selected. So we can select it here. And then under the fill menu, you'll notice there's a new category called emboss settings. So if you click that, and click the little dots, you end up getting a new dialog called Emboss Settings dialog. And this is familiar, if you're familiar with these dialogs or with lettering and things like that, it's not much different. Um, basically, they, um, it won't stop moving. Um, they have just some categories here. We gotta get this guy moved over. Okay, if you would just stop. Okay, um, so basically we have, in here, we notice that we have one, two, three, four, five objects. We added five objects before, remember? And so um, they're not really numbered in here, but you notice that there's, um, the endpoints are marked as red for the item that's currently selected in the list, so that one's there. And then this one is marked there. So the endpoints get marked in red which one's currently active in this list. So you see that, and you can see that one. Um, 
the line. So we have a couple, we have four different things here. We have closed, which basically will close the object and when you do that it ends up filling the object with stitches. So in this case we have a stitch length of 5 so it's going to fill up with stitch length of 5. That's really small for probably what we want to do so we'll just send that to 20. Um, we'll just set that to 20 and you can see now there's stitches added. Now they're kind of in a weird pattern because when the fill is filled this way and up and down, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So basically it's 20 from the edge down through. Now if you don't want to fill at all, you just make this a very large color. I mean you don't want stitches at all. You make this a very large number that you know that actually won't stitch. And then you end up having no stitches in that. And that's how I did the thing on the Facebook page where you saw that there were no stitches. So if I go here and do the 3D graphic, you can see that now this is just a dot that would be a satin, if you will. We still have the embosses over here. Let's go back to the edit emboss settings. Um, so that's that. To make it a satin, you just make the stitch length very large and you make it closed. Um, what Stitch Edges does um, is if you have a line and it could either put one stitch or two stitches. So if you put stitch edges, it always will have at least two stitches plus whatever the stitch length stitches are. So what I mean by that is if we go ahead to this item here, which I gotta find it, I think it's this one. Yes, um, this has basically a width of one right now, but we set this to 10, let's say. you notice that now we have actually an emboss that's wider. And it's filled with stitches um, five apart. If we change this to a much larger number, again, um, you'll notice that basically it will be uh, just two stitches on each side of this here. Now if I turn off the stitch edges, it's only going to put one stitch in. And well, it's going to put one stitch in on each direction. So, like, um, this, the fill goes up and down, up and down, up and down. So, it's going to have one stitch as it's going here, and then when it goes to the next line uh, side, it's not going to have a stitch. But when it comes back up, it's going to have a stitch on this side, and then it's not going to have a stitch on that side. So, generally, you want to have stitch edges clicked. Um, there's not many cases where you wouldn't want that clicked, but generally you want it clicked, especially if you're doing something with a width. If you have a, something with just one, you probably don't need this. You don't, you don't necessarily want so many stitches, so you'll have to figure that out. Okay, um, let's talk a little bit more about those settings. Um, we're going to go ahead and zoom in really close to the curve line. And the reason we're doing that is I want to explain how the widths work with this line and how the stitches work. So if you notice here, you can see there's stitches along this line. Some of these are pattern stitches from the pattern, so we won't look at those. But in this area, you can see there's a stitch here and there's a stitch here, etc. Now this line's set to one right at this point, and as the stitches go down, it sees that um, the line there and it puts a stitch but you notice that there's only one stitch here now if I go to the emboss settings again okay and um, you can see here that for this particular line which um, we'll turn this on we'll see if this is like that that's red okay so that's one of the lines points. Um, you can see that we have a width here now of 1, and we have this turned off. If we turn on stitched edges, you notice that now there will be two stitches for each line, because it stitches one stitch for when it saw the line, and then when it, the, the line, the other edge of the line is, or the other edge of this line, it stitches another one. Now that's important if you have this larger, so 
if we set this to 10, let's say, you can see that you would want to have stitches over here on this other end of the line because when you look at it, when you look at it, it basically defines this area here. If you didn't have that on and you had a width set of more than one, let's show you what that looks like. It kind of just disappears. It, your emboss is not really going to show up in that case. That might be an effect you want. It might be a subtle effect. That's something that you can decide yourself. But if you're going to make it um, wide, you should always have this on. If you're going to make it thin, you probably want to turn it off because then you'll have two stitches really closely spaced and that might not work well. So it's up to you to decide how you want to do it. You can see that you have now this line here, like that. So that's embosses. Just go ahead and play around with the dialogue. Try to understand what it's doing. As everything in embroidery, it's always a good idea to do some samples, test them out on your machine, find out what settings are good, what settings work for you, etc. And the last thing I'd like to talk to you about is that if you set your satin to, if you set your fill to a satin fill and you have it cross appropriately um, across your object, across your, your embosses, you'll end up getting an effect like this, which can be kind of fun.